Hey woodcutters, Topsaw here. This channel is all things wood. I do tree work on the weekends and then we do woodworking in the shop. Today I have a super cool video on a friend of mine who owns a tree service who brought in some poplar logs and we milled it into this gorgeous wood right here. So this video is going to be the delivery of the logs, uh, milling it out and stacking it and a bowl made out of this wood. One of my old students from many years ago who did tree work with me in high school now owns his own tree service. So he brings logs to the high school for us to mill out. I'll bring some logs in that I've taken down as well. These are cottonwood logs. Um, I think they're probably about 15 feet long. And maybe the biggest one is about 18 inches, 20 inches in diameter. Turn out to be beautiful logs. And in the shop here, this is actually poplar wood that we've made into a cutting board. So just to get an idea of what it'll look like. And then here are the logs here out of the trailer. Um, they're pretty, pretty good size. They have some nice knots in them. So this is our Vermeer CTX 50 with the grapple in the front. It doesn't have a hydraulic spin on it, but you can, if you have that log balance well, spin the grapple. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, these logs are kind of maximum capacity for this little mini skid steer. That bottom one, you could lift up, but probably only get it a few inches off the ground as long as it's really close into the machine. We uh, usually paint these with Arbor Seal paint on the ends, and that helps prevent the checking or prevents a lot of the checking. The, these cottonwood logs are really, really wet all the way through. They're soaking wet. I mean, they almost feel like 50% um, moisture inside of them. There's a nice little teeny one. And you could see here how you could spin it um, pretty easily by hand if, as long as it's balanced pretty well. So sometimes on the big logs, it's really nice to have the grapple going with the machine like it is here. So you could pull the weight in really close to the machine. And then sometimes it's nice to be able to unhook it and spin it and pull them up lengthwise for the little pieces so that you can put them exactly where you want them, whether you're approaching the pile from the side or from the end of the pile. Here's one of probably the biggest logs out of it. You can see it's maximum load for the mini skid steer. Um, I know I'm kind of using the words cottonwood and poplar interchangeably in here. But usually in the U.S., the term poplar almost always refers to a specific wood species, Liriodendrum tulipifera. Other common names of this wood are yellow poplar, tulip poplar, American tulip wood. The only problem with referring to this species as poplar is that if you're talking about trees, it isn't actually a type of poplar tree. That title belongs to a genus of trees called populus. So I know it's a little complicated, um, but there are a lot of different trees that go into the poplar type of wood. I know this channel is all things wood, and I love every aspect of wood, the science behind the way the trees grow. I love climbing trees, I love cutting trees, milling lumber, building wood projects, but the students have many times told me how crazy I am when I start, when I start going crazy on trees. So I'll keep it relatively, um, not crazy. So basically with the poplar wood is kind of split into two main groups, kind of a cottonwood group and an aspen group. This is actually a cottonwood and part of ways you could tell it's a cottonwood is that when you mill it and cut it, it's really, really soaked with water and it smells kind of strong in a bad way. Um, all of the poplars, whether it's a black poplar, black cottonwood, or even the aspens, all have a lot of similar properties in, in the wood itself. And that is that they have really small pores so they finish really nicely. In the wood shop, they machine really well, easy to cut, easy to plane. Um, they're really lightweight and they're just nice woods to work with in a wood shop setting. All right, here we are with the mini skid steer. Rather than trying to work that into the edge, just dropped it and then now I'm just pushing it in with the thumb on the mini skid steer. This works pretty well for moving the logs around. 
especially since these mini skid sears don't actually have blades in the front. The downside of doing this is you really pick up a lot of gravel. So you gotta be really careful to keep track of where that gravel is getting pushed into the bark so that it doesn't end up on the mill. It's always hard to get these things started, but with a little bit of a running start, um, this little mini skid steer kind of pushed stuff around with no trouble at all. Uh, here we are. And then here are the ends uh, right here. This is a friend of mine who's a wood turner. He cut one little block off. And off of that block, he turned these two bowls. So he comes in and he works with the students. He just cut one block off, brought them home that night, and turned these two bowls. Uh, and you can just see how spectacular they are. Turning wet wood is really enjoyable and really fun. Um, no dust or anything. The downside is it warps a little bit as it dries. So he comes in and he volunteers with the students, helps them turning since we could only get a few students at a time. That orange right there in the log is this orange right here inside the bowl. It's really pretty grain. And these bowls came out beautifully. This guy's a really gifted um, educator and wood turner. Retired, uh, loves to come in and work with the students. So he's really a giant asset to my shop. Actually, a great part of my shop is how community-based it really is. I just love having people from the community come in and see what we're doing and work with the kids, show them what they do, show them their passions towards woodworking and understanding wood and grain patterns. Um, I think the kids love it as well. I mean, I know I say this a lot in a lot of my videos, but kids today, they just get better and better. They are so, I mean, they're just so on the job. They just love being involved in things. They just love to be part of making stuff and doing stuff. I think they're a million times better than I ever was at that age. So a little plug for the next generation. Here, here is uh, my friend testing the water content in these bowls. He cut the wood yesterday, turned them last night, and it's down at about 14%. Still coming out. That kind of in a thicker spot right there, it's at about 23, 24% moisture content. He did put it in the oven and he baked it in the oven a little bit to get some of the moisture out. And on the back there, this note right here shows the weight going into the oven and the weight coming out of the oven. Can't quite read it, but it lost a substantial amount of moisture without any checking at all. Um, I think he's going to put that in a brown bag and let it dry a little bit more and then do a final turn on it. You can see how interested in the wood turnings the students are as well. And there's that really pretty orange streak. I'm not too sure what ended up causing that. So like this piece here, I brought it. There's a crack here I, I sealed with super glue. This right here is actually, there was a check in it uh, and they just filled that with a little bit of wood glue uh, mixed with sawdust. And it really heavy on the sawdust and kind of worked it in there. And then that'll sand right out once it dries a little bit more and when it goes back onto the lathe. Beautiful bowl, really nice grain patterns in it. Um, here's a resin table. I think I have a link to another video on that. Oh, that costume on that kid. I think this is actually on Halloween or right around Halloween. Um, that resin table came out really cool. I did do a video on that. That was out of a giant dug fir log. Part of the reason why this bowl is so spectacular, it's the grain in the wood, but more importantly, it's a wood turner picking the right piece of wood to turn. And that's how he really has those really pretty grain patterns in the bowls. So, I mean, he just, you know, we got these logs only a few days ago. He just came in, cut off a couple blocks, turned them that night, brought back into the class to show the kids. And then this is maybe the, the same day that he came in. The log has been put on the mill. And this is cottonwood log, and we're cutting the poplar wood. And we've already cut our four cans, and now we're just cutting the slabs out of it. This is a Wood Miser LT15 wide mill. It's a beautiful beautiful addition to the wood shop. Um, we really have all this gorgeous material um, and the students could do whatever they want with it. So it really doesn't cost us anything now that we have the mill. You can see how beautiful this wood is coming out really nice. 
we're actually stacking and stickering it in the shop itself because I think Rain's expecting. Um, and you can just see we're kind of running out of room. We have so much wood. But you can just see the colors in this lumber. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful wood. I'm really excited for it to dry and uh, the students to make some cool projects out of this really pretty wood. If you're uh, new to this channel, think about subscribing. This channel is all things wood. If you like this video, hit the like button. And uh, I'd like to hear your comments, your thoughts on cottonwood versus poplar versus aspenwood. I'm sure there are a lot of people watching and know more about it than I do. So put your comments below. And I do, I like making these videos. Um, and I thank you for watching.